At Moran Bar North, we use the CSE SR100A self-contained self-rescuer as our first response in the event of an emergency requiring protection from a dangerous atmosphere. It must be carried on you at all times whilst underground and it is essential for your safety that you understand how to operate it correctly. The SR100A is a closed circuit self-contained oxygen breathing apparatus that has a duration of around 50 minutes. This time can be extended by reducing your workload and avoiding overexertion. At rest, the unit may last several hours. It is essential that the rescuer you take underground is in good condition. There are a number of checks that should be carried out when you first collect your rescuer to ensure it will operate correctly if required. Check the top and bottom moisture indicators are blue. If these indicators are white or pink, moisture has entered the unit and it may not operate effectively. Check the temperature indicator. This should be white. If it is red, the unit has been exposed to high temperatures and should not be taken underground. Finally, check to ensure the security strap on top of the unit has not been broken and that all seals look to be in good condition and there are no major dents. You should don the unit at the first sign of smoke or when told to do so by a supervisor. To ensure a correct fitting, follow this procedure. Kneel down and place the CSE SR100A on the ground in front of you. Open the unit by lifting the latch on top and removing the bottom and top covers. Place the next strap of the unit over your head. Pull the large fluorescent orange oxygen actuator tag down to activate the oxygen. If no oxygen is supplied on activation, the bag can be filled easily by inhaling into the unit two to six times. Remove the SR100A mouthpiece plug and insert the unit's mouthpiece into your mouth. Pull the two nose pads apart and place the nose piece on so that both nostrils are completely closed. Wrap the waist strap, which hangs from the bottom of the canister, around your waist and fasten it to the canister on the right side. Put on the safety goggles that are located in the bottom cover. If required, you can adjust the neck strap so the unit hangs more comfortably. After donning the rescuer, discard any non-essential equipment to minimise your carrying weight. Remember, walk at a steady pace as overexertion will reduce the effective duration of the rescuer. Once you are ready to make your escape, you should proceed to the nearest compressed air breathing apparatus or CABA changeover station. These are located strategically underground to allow you to reach them at an easy walking pace well within the duration of your self-rescuer. We use a tag board system to ensure there are sufficient CABA units available in each area for the number of people in that area. When entering an area, you must ensure your tag has been placed on the board and remove it when you leave. If a tag board is full, do not proceed into that area. It is important that you are familiar with the components of the CABA unit. Firstly, the cylinder. It stores the compressed air and has a 9 litre capacity. When full, it has a pressure of 30 megapascals or 300 bar. At the base of the cylinder is the tap with which you will turn the air supply on. The back plate and harness allow comfortable carriage of the unit and attached to the harness is the quick fill hose for when you reach the refill station. On the left side of the unit is the pressure gauge that you will need to monitor and a warning whistle that sounds when there is approximately 10 minutes of air left in the tank. The full face mask is used with a lung demand valve or LDV. On the LDV there are two controls that you need to be aware of. The first breath button and the bypass valve. These will be explained shortly. The mask protects you from contaminants and heat and supplies air through the LDV. The duration of the caber will vary with the exertion required to escape, the fitness level of the wearer and the level of leakage around the face. Leakage will increase with the amount of facial hair. Full bottles will last 55 minutes as a minimum if the user maintains a normal walking pace. 
The warning whistle will sound when you have approximately 10 minutes of air supply left or 50 bar. Therefore, you should proceed to the next refill station immediately. When you are wearing a caber, there are some guidelines you should follow. Always maintain a steady pace. Do not run or panic. Try to breathe evenly and slowly and as normally as possible and check your gauge regularly at least every two to five minutes. In an emergency situation you will be already wearing your CSE self-rescuer when you arrive at a changeover station to collect your caber. We will now outline the procedure to follow when you are changing from your rescuer to the caber. It is vital that you understand this process as it could mean the difference between life and death. This procedure uses the positive pressure in the face mask to clear any potentially fouled atmosphere from around your breathing zone during the changeover. Once you arrive at the changeover station, remove the caber unit which will include the cylinder, harness and face mask. Remove the mask from its bag and press the first breath button. This resets the LDV mechanism which in turn stops the positive pressure flow of air to the face mask. Upon taking your first breath, it will automatically activate the LDV to start again. Turn the oxygen on by operating the tap at the bottom of the cylinder. If you did not press the first breath button, oxygen will immediately escape from the mask. If this occurs, press the first breath button as instructed. Ensure all the straps on the mask are placed forward to allow placement of the mask onto your face. Remove your hard hat and glasses and place the next strap of the caber over your head. To purge any foul air from the mask and immediate area of your face, turn the bypass valve on. You'll notice air being expelled from the mask. Now remove the nose clip and mouthpiece of the CSE self-rescuer and place the caber mask onto your face. Place the head straps over your head and tighten for a comfortable fit and airtight seal. Then turn off the bypass valve and breathe normally. You will notice that the LDV only provides air as required. Placing the mouthpiece plug back into the mouthpiece of the CSE self-rescuer will preserve any oxygen in that unit in case you need it later on. Now place the caber onto your back by placing your right arm through the harness first and then your left. Lean forward and adjust the shoulder straps by pulling down for a good firm fitting. Then connect the waist strap and adjust for comfort. Replace your hard hat. Prior to commencing your withdrawal from the mine, ensure your cylinder is full. If it is not showing 300 bar, you will need to top it up at the refill station. To do this, open the doors and activate the system by turning the main isolating valve anti-clockwise. Take off the dust cap from the fill hose on your caber and then remove one of the filler hoses from the bracket and remove its dust cap. Push the air male and female couplings together until a click is heard. Now turn on the fill station tap for your hose and you will notice the pressure on your caber gauge begin to increase. Once the gauge reaches 300 bar, your unit is fully charged. At this point, turn off the refill hose and disconnect the charge air couplings by pulling away the sleeve of the female coupling and then refit the dust covers on both hoses. You can then return the filler hose back to the bracket and make room for the next person to recharge their caber or turn the main isolator off. You are now ready to evacuate the mine. If you hear the warning whistle, you have approximately 10 minutes of air left. You will need to get to the next refill station to recharge the unit without delay. Remember, walk at a steady pace, breathe normally and check your gauge every two to five minutes. Do not remove your caber unit until you are told to do so by emergency personnel.